everyone. My name is Mary Case. I am an artist and we are at my art gallery and studio in Ludington, Michigan. Working outdoors again today because it's another hot summer day here in Michigan. Today's project is going to be a slab face and you would receive all the objects in your box that you need to, to uh, complete this project. So the things that you'll find will be a circular slab of clay, um, an extra remnant slab and a lump of clay. You'll also will get a board that will work really well for um, working on this project, but you're gonna need a little more table space with this one. So I recommend if you've got a table that you can work on that um, is wood like this picnic table. Uh, laminate's a little tricky because clay tends to stick. So you may want to maybe lay out some newspaper or something. You'll also have a few tools in your kit, a wooden pointer tool that works real well as like a drawing or pencil tool, a, a carving tool that has sharp corners and a rounded edge, and then a nice needle tool that's really good for cutting as well. Then I also searched around my house for some cool found objects because today I thought it might be fun to do some stamping in the clay. I, found this cool old vintage candle holder and um, this might be fun to make a pattern in the clay. And I've got some Mardi Gras beads here. I thought this might be kind of cool. Just a, a wooden dowel, make a nice circle. Found a golf ball. So this will be kind of fun to see what happens here today. Now your kit will come with a big old, golly, hug a clay like this and you're gonna open it up out of the bag and you're gonna find that your clay is wrapped around a cylinder. And you're gonna need that cylinder for this project. So you're, you're gonna find it to be quite bulky, but very purposeful. So we're gonna actually set these objects to the side and I'm gonna clear the dry clay from the last project I did out of the way so it doesn't stick to the bottom of my project. I'm sure your workspace will be much cleaner than mine. And then we are going to unwind this slab of clay. Now this slab of clay is already giving us <laughs> the suggestion of where we're going with this. It's gonna be a giant slab that's gonna kind of, hi Matisse. We got a giant slab here that we're gonna kind of wrap, do this wrap around vase thing. but. For now, we need to unwrap our slab of clay and lay it out on the table so we can work. And then we'll put our cylinder off to the side. This cylinder is wrapped in plastic so that when you send it back to the studio, I'll be able to get the cylinder out and your vase will remain. So I'm going to work on my um, kind of what kind of a design. I'm gonna do something very abstract today I'm just going to kind of clean up my slab. My, my table's uneven, but that's not gonna really matter at the end of the day because I'll be able to put this clay around the cylinder and it'll, it'll all work out. So I'm just smoothing it with my fingers now. This feels amazing. Um, I got a jar of water here off to the side, which I may use as well. I think for my, the beads look like they might be kind of fun. Now, before you do any kind of stamping, if you want to do a little bit of experimenting with your extra slab of clay, you can do that. I, I tend to like to do some experimenting sometimes before I go crazy. That turned out pretty cool. That's fun. Let's see, we got our golf ball here. Let's see what it does. I like that too. That's cool. Um, you know, Legos are fun pieces of lace are neat. You will have more fun, I think, finding objects in your home that you can create stamps out of. And then I can't wait to see what this candle holder does. Okay, so let's see what that does. Oh, that is really cool. Kind of reminds me of a tire track, but I really, really love that. Okay, so now I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to go crazy here and do some really fun and whimsical type things. Maybe, maybe it'll be more organized. Maybe not. I think the beads here, I'm going to kind of do like the beads can be a border that goes all the way around my piece. Just 
just keep pushing into the clay. Um, also too, like old jewelry that you might find in your grandmother's <laughs> jewelry box is always the funnest because there are some really cool stuff, pendants that are, you know, really old and just leave really cool designs. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I'm having a lot of fun. You can see I'm kind of just going into a sort of a circular motion here with my beads. And of course, everything I do, I'm rushing. I'm, I'm rushing along here because I want to be able to give you a video that doesn't go so long, but gives you an idea of what you can do. You, you need to take your time and make your um, object, your beautiful piece of art, more purposeful, more thoughtful. You can be crazy and random, but remember, your, your project might take much longer than mine because you're going to think it through and I'm going to rush through it because I don't want to make the video so long that you know no one wants to sit here and watch it so we're just gonna kind of do some things so you can learn some techniques and then you'll have all the time in the world to work on your your project I think might use my carving tool now to sort of get some petals on what is now going to be flowers. Kind of got this really cool abstract look going here with some awesome daisies. It's just great when you're outside and you can just flick the clay on the ground. But if you're working at home, you can also flick the clay on the ground. It will dry and then it sweeps up very nicely. It seems sticky now, but it dries quickly and then you'll be able to broom it up very easily when you're ready to call it a day. Crazy clay everywhere. I've seen some students do some really amazing things uh, with these slab vases, ideas. I've, I've had some that have done some really cool nautical scenes, um, geometric scenes, some really fun things, and they had taken the time to really think some things out. So you don't have to go as fast as I am. I'm gonna add a daisy over here in the center of this kind of whirlwind. Okay, so the only object I didn't use this, I was like holding back for this one to the end. I, I'm not really sure if I even need it, but I feel like I should do it. So I'm gonna just add it because I, I just think it's kind of a cool, cool thing. And then maybe something on the edge here. Okay, I think I'm gonna actually take this candle holder and take it all the way to the edge. That'll give me a more organic edge on my piece at the end of the day when I go to build this into a, a vase. All right, so I'm ready. I'm ready to build it into a vase. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, this is where the tricky part is. This is a pretty big piece of clay. And you can see how it even wants to stick to this wooden table, so. If you've got a piece of plywood at home that you can work on, that would be much better than, like I said, like say your laminate countertop. And even the paper, if it gets um, too moist, will stick to your clay. But don't worry, it burns off in the kiln. So if you can't get it off, no worries. My slab kind of left a mark from my picnic table. Okay, we're gonna take this tube that came in your kit and you wanna line that up. We're close to where the bottom is. And then you're going to start at the straight edge and start rolling toward the uneven edge. And you want to keep it relatively tight, but don't worry if it's a little bit loose because um, 
we do need to be able to pull the tube out later and that is something that I will do because you're going to actually ship this thing back to the studio with its tube in it. Okay, so in order to do the bottom on this thing, you got to make sure you're not crushing, crushing this. So um, I'm actually going to, oh, sorry, Matisse, I startled you. <laughs> I'm going to unroll it and make sure that my tube is hanging out the bottom of the slab just a little bit. We're going to roll it back up. That's better. There, it's hanging out the bottom. I just wanted that to be the bottom, and then I can set this down, and you can see where it's kind of got this wrapped look, and I like this uneven look. If, if you don't want it to be uneven, you're welcome to cut a straight line before you wrap it. I've also got just sort of this piece hanging off the top. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm just going to take my tool and kind of make it more gradual. I like that better. And then I can even adjust that edge with my cool little tool here going around the top. Now we do need to attach this piece and it, and it did cover up a bit of my design and I can cut it back if I like if I don't want to do that if I want to reveal that I or you could even have a wavy edge I, I kind of like the wavy edge maybe I'll do that okay so I'm going to do some scoring now this is a technique where I have to rough up the clay wherever it is going to make contact with other parts of clay because the contact areas need to connect really well and so scoring it is a process of using your sharp needle tool to rough up the clay and upon roughing it up you're creating an area where you can add water and then that water will create a slurry or a slip like surface that's kind of gummy get them get them gummed up really good and and feel free to do a little extra scoring after you put the water on. And now we can attach by gently pushing. And I'm gonna kinda leave this flaring out a little bit. I kinda like that. It cracked a little bit here, so I'm just mending it with my finger in some water. And wherever you see areas of your uh, your project here that you might want to smooth with your finger in water, you can do that. But you do need to make sure that that connection is very good. And so you got to push and get that connection down. And then you can touch things up afterwards. If maybe you flatten things out with your fingers. So to put the bottom on our piece, we need to take the pre-cut circular slab and we're actually going to attach it to the bottom here like so. And so I'm just going to set this down for a minute because I need to prep this circular slab so that it's ready. And we're going to use that same technique that I showed you earlier, which is called scoring. And I'm going to score all the way around the edge of my bottom. And then I can do the same thing to the bottom edge of my vase. And then with water, we're going to add water to the bottom of my vase and add water to the scored outer edge of my circular slab. And then the two shall become one. Now, feel free after you get it lined up there to kind of set your piece down and just with your finger start, actually, I always like to say you're marrying the two pieces. If you turn this upside down, the actual gravity might sort of start to work against you. So I really do think it's important to get that bottom attached to some degree before you turn it upside down. So if you can see here where I am using my finger to blend. Now I know it's kind of messing up my fantastic uh, design that I've 
work so hard on, but you're going to be able to fix all those things after you get that bottom attached. It's, it's very important to get a good connection with the bottom of your vase. Just keep lifting and, and moving uh, your piece and just keep smushing it with your finger till you work all the way around your piece and it's got a good, pretty good connection. Now, now you can turn it upside down and then even take more diligent time to make sure that that connection is really good. And then after you take the time to get that connection so that it is really good, then you can take your, your tools and you can fix all the smushing mistakes that you've now made that have kind of wrecked your piece because that's how it is with clay. I'm even going to smooth out the bottom here. Um, and then with my little objects that I have here, I'm going to fix all my patterns. I think I'm even going to go so far as to maybe even add a little bit of pattern on the bottom of my piece. I think that's cool. And then you can take the time to see if there's anything that you need to touch up with your finger or maybe you need to still add some design. You can still do some design work on this. You can still carve into it. And then here we go. And um, I think that I kind of lost my little wave I had earlier. I just completely smushed it. So I'm going to pull it back out now if it wants to come back out. Because I kind of like that little wave that I had started with as my initial idea. It just kind of gave it a very whimsical look. And, and so when you're all done here, you're just going to have a really cool vase. So now we're going to get this ready to go back to the studio. We're going to flip this over so the bottom is up. Going to take our plastic bag and put it over our clay piece. Flip it back over. And then tuck the excess bag into your clay piece. This is important so it doesn't dry out. Okay. Okay, so now you're going to put all these things back into the box. Put the board in first and the tools and then gently set your piece down in the box like so, so it doesn't get smashed. When it comes back to the studio, I'll open it up, inspect it, make sure everything is good, and then it goes into the kiln. And then in your kit, you'll also have a sheet that will show all the different kinds of glaze choices for the studio, and all the glazes that you'll find uh, on this sheet are specially selected so that they show really good relief sculpture that you're doing on your piece. Happy pottery!